Hello visionaries, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Talbert. I'm the founder and CEO of Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. For anybody who's been a part of this channel for any length of time, I know I've been MIA. I'm so happy to be back. I was, I was in a trial that was expected to last for three weeks and I ended up being away for two months. But while I was gone, we hit a thousand subscribers. So I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who is rocking with me. Thank you for everyone who is appreciating the content. Um, and thank you for subscribing. Continue to let me know what questions you have and what content that you want to see. And I just appreciate your commentary so, so much. So thank you again. From what I gather, you all really enjoy the information related to holding companies. Those are my highest viewed videos to date. And so today we're going to continue to talk about how to manage the day to day in your holding company. No long intros needed. Let's jump right into it. So let me just start by talking about a true holding company. A true holding company does not actually operate like a traditional business because it is not an operating company like a traditional business. There are no actual day-to-day -day operations in a true holding company because that happens in the subsidiary, which is owned by the holding company. Each subsidiary should have its own management who runs its day-to-day -day operations as an operating company. So then that begs the question, what is actually happening in the holding company? So I'm going to give you five activities that you should be engaging in to manage your holding company. So number one, a holding company oversees how the subsidiaries are run. Subsidiaries are run like the business entity that they are, whether that's a real estate business, a restaurant, a retail company, whatever that business is, it's managing its day-to-day -day operations. This is going to include sales, marketing, accounting, customer service, human resources, those types of things. In the subsidiary, this will also include setting your business goals and priorities, managing your supply and your distribution chains, selling your product or service, hiring and training employees, applying for permits and licenses, managing company capital and financial record keeping, marketing and brand development, and cultivating your client and customer relationships. While the subsidiary is managing those day-to-day -day operations within its business, the holding company, on the other hand, may be purchasing software and equipment for the subsidiaries to lease from the holding company. This, in turn, helps the subsidiary increase efficiency and productivity, enhance the customer or the client experience, and also creates revenue for the holding company. The holding company could also hire the team that trains all of the employees or could hire the bookkeeper that maintains all of the financial records across all of the subsidiaries. These are just a few of the ways that a holding company oversees how subsidiaries are run. All right, number two, the holding company also has the right to elect and remove corporate directors or LLC management. So basically, the holding company has the right to hire and fire members of the subsidiary's management. If a subsidiary is not meeting business revenue goals or other priorities, the holding company can hire and fire the CEO, the COO, or managers of the subsidiaries. That's big boss moves. And it just goes back to number one. And it's another way that the holding company can oversee how the subsidiaries are run. All right, number three, the holding company can make policy decisions for the subsidiaries. So for example, a holding company can choose whether a subsidiary becomes a franchise or not. A holding company can also decide whether to merge a subsidiary with another company or to dissolve a subsidiary altogether. One prime example is when AOL merged with Time Warner. Another is when Disney merged with 21st Century Fox. Those types of decisions are made by the holding companies. All right, moving right along. Number four, the holding company is responsible for investing profits from the subsidiary 
to make more money. Again, this could be done by creating a franchise for the subsidiary. It could be through purchasing other businesses and other subsidiary companies, or it could be through just investing in high quality stocks or real estate. But that decision falls on the holding company and not the subsidiary itself. And last but not least, number five, the holding company can provide services to the subsidiaries. So we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier where I talked about that the holding company could purchase software or equipment that it leases to the subsidiaries. That's one way of providing a service. Another way of providing a service is by hiring personnel. So I mentioned earlier that the holding company could hire the team that trains the employees. The holding company could hire the human resources team. The holding company could hire the lawyers for all the subsidiaries. The holding company could hire the accountants for the subsidiaries. Um, those are ways to provide services. This is a way to generate revenue for the holding company, but it also helps the subsidiary companies because they're going to spend less money on the internal team than they would if they hired outside of the company. And in particular, if you have a holding company, there are three people that I always recommend that any business has. Number one is a good business lawyer. Number two is a bookkeeper and or accountant and tax strategist. And I say accountant and tax strategist because that person should not just be an accountant where they account for your funds, but they should also be a tax strategist that helps you to lower your tax burden. And number three, a business banker. And we'll talk about that more, about why you need those three people on your team. But if you have a holding company, that is one great way to provide services to your subsidiaries. All right, so really quickly, I'm just gonna recap the five activities that will help you manage your holding company. Number one is overseeing how the subsidiary is run. Number two is hiring and firing the management in your subsidiaries. Number three is making policy decisions for your subsidiaries. Number four is investing the profits of your subsidiaries to earn more money. And number five is to provide services to your subsidiaries. All right, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna get back to our regular schedule of once a week on Wednesdays. And I just thank you so much for rocking with me and getting us to a thousand subscribers. I'll continue to let me know your questions in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All right. With that, this is Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I made it this far.